Three actually horrifying true horror stories. Story one. When my cousin Cody and I were in our early 20s, we went on a handful of camping trips around Colorado. This happened, I believe, when I was 22 and he was 23, and it happened in Yarapaho Forest. It was my first time camping there, not Cody's though. It was in the middle of the week. Our jobs allowed us to have off days in the middle of the week, and we'd often go on our campouts then to avoid traffic and crowds. Okay. I always let Cody take charge on these trips. He's the Eagle Scout, not me. We parked by a picnic area, and we set foot into the woods from there. After about 15 minutes of hiking deeper into the woods, we found a good spot to set up camp. A good spot, meaning a big enough clearing to fit two tents, the portable stove, and a campfire. Chillin. The first thing we did was unpack our stuff and set up our tents. Get your guns out as well. He has always been a lot quicker than me in pitching a tent. He does it in only a few minutes. It always takes me over 20 minutes. Or rather, it always took me over 20 minutes, as I haven't been camping out in the wilderness since this. Okay. The next thing we did was create a ring of stones for a fire, and then gathered some sticks and wood. He did bring some fire starter and a lighter, so I guess we kind of cheated, but oh Yo! Well. It was at the point in the day when the sun was going down. We had a fire going, and now Cody was grilling up some steak and burgers. One thing Ooh. about Cody is he always went all out with the food on these trips, and he's a really good cook, so I always trusted him with feeding us. Of course, we had our bear spray in case the smell of the food would attract a black bear, which Cody always said was very unlikely. He always says the real thing you gotta worry about in the middle of the woods is other people. Yo, that's actually facts. We ate our facts. steak and burgers. We cracked open some beers and had some classic rock playing on the speaker. If you've never been camping, you don't understand how good of a vibe moments like this are. In the wilderness with a friend or family member and some beers, reminiscing about good times and vibing to music. At Yo, is that true chat? Because I've never been camping and, and from these videos, I don't think I ever will. So I would, I'll never know that feeling. As it got dark, we started playing card games on this little folding platform table we brought specifically for cards. After playing more traditional card sick. games, we started playing Uno. And this was when we heard something out in the woods. I paused the song on my phone so that the speaker would go silent. Subscribe to Alfred WG today. It was clear now. So weird, Tom. We heard a person humming and footsteps from beyond the trees in the pitch blackness of the forest. Okay. Cody urged me to find the flashlight. I tried, but by the time I found it, the sounds had faded away. I asked Cody if that was something to be concerned about, and he said it definitely was unusual for someone else to be this deep in the woods, let alone creepily walking by a campsite with an active campfire humming loudly. I was a bit shaken, and I saw Cody was too. We went back to playing cards with the music much lower now. When we least expected it, a big stick landing in the middle of our campsite made us both jump out of our skin. Oh shit! It didn't fall from a tree. This thing was thrown at us by someone. Cody started yelling something along the lines of, whoever's out there messing with us, get a life and f*** off. And then, footsteps could be heard once again in the distance. They were walking away from us. I said we should pack up camp and move somewhere else. He said absolutely not in the dark. We both had bear spray, and he advised to just keep it next to me in my tent when we go to sleep. It was the closest thing to ranged self-defense weapons we had. We kept hearing sounds like guns? tree branches cracking in the distance. Sounds that you would never expect an animal to be making. Someone was out there. Maybe multiple people, that much was clear. We had to go to sleep eventually. So we agreed that maybe we should take turns staying up to keep watch to make sure that no one comes to our campsite and steals anything, or worse. Cody agreed to take first watch. He said he'd stay up and read his book. So I crawled into my tent and then my sleeping bag and went to sleep. Good night, Kara. Waking up in the middle of the night while camping is normal. You're in a cold, outdoor environment in an uncomfortable sleeping bag. Any number of things could wake you up. Right. I didn't yet know what woke me up. I was still in a fog. My brain didn't feel fully woken up Someone's yet. in tent. I looked up and saw a head peering into my tent. Yo, fuck it that. looked like Cody. I rubbed my eyes, but really it was the darkness that was preventing me from seeing anything of his face. Fuck that. I said Cody, thinking he was waking me up to take my turn of keeping watch. I said groggily, is it my turn? I stared at the head peering at me in my sleeping bag. 
slowly growing more awake every second. Then I heard the zipper to the tent quickly zip up and his head disappeared. I laid back down in my sleeping bag, but only for a second. I suddenly had some weird moment of clarity where I shot to an upright position and listened as the footsteps walked away. Yo. Cody, I said. He didn't answer. I unzipped my tent to peek out to the campsite. The fire was dead. Cody wasn't out there. I went over to Cody's tent, which was zipped up. I unzipped it and looked inside to see Cody fast asleep in his sleeping bag. I got chills, goosebumps, whatever Bruh, you want to call it. Who goes round other people's tents peeking in? I almost shit myself at the realization. I started shaking him awake, and when he finally awoke, I told him someone's here, at the campsite. It took him a minute to come back to reality just like I did, but when he did, he grabbed his bear spray. He said he must have dozed off while reading. He said I should sleep in the tent with him tonight, but to do that, I'd need my sleeping bag. He came outside of the tent with me and stood watch as I ran to my tent to grab my sleeping bag. In my tent, grabbing my sleeping bag, I heard that goddamn humming again from outside. Oh my god, this guy. I grabbed it and Cody whispered at me to hurry up. I said, you hear that too? He said, yes. We both got back in his tent and zipped it up with our cans of bear spray by our sides. I tell you, in those moments, I wanted nothing more than for a bear to come and save the day. The hours dragged on as I stayed up while Cody slept. After three long, horrible hours, I woke him up and we switched. When Cody woke me up, it was almost dawn. There was light outside. So we packed everything up, and by the time we were done, there was plenty of light to hike back to the car. While we could have driven somewhere else and had another night of camping elsewhere, neither of us were feeling it anymore. This was a haunting experience, and I think we both just wanted to be in the safety of our houses. It's been six years since this happened, and he's hit me up a few times since then about camping, but I haven't really had interest since this experience. People are just too scary. Why was someone out there stalking our campsite? In the Yo, side that's what I'm saying, bro. When we hear the, about these camping stories, they're so scary by other people. Literally other people, crazy people there. So scary, bro. That person's head in the dark, just looking into my tent. It was straight up from a nightmare. I may never go camping again, honestly. Hell nah. Hell no. Story two. When my friends and I rented a beach house in Florida, I never could have expected how things would have turned out. It was the four of us in a cramped car driving down there. The house was directly on the beach. It was on this road that had the bay in front of the house across the street, and then in the backyard was literally the beach. Very nice. There were some huge houses on this road, and some smaller, more normal looking ones. This was one of the more modest looking ones. It had four bedrooms, so a bedroom for each of us. The houses were spaced out on this road, creating a sense of privacy. And the whole time we were unloading the car out front, not a single car passed by on this road. The interior of the house was decent. It wasn't spectacular, but it was modest, clean, and the owners were really pushing a beach theme with the wall decor. I guess it would make sense considering the location. Yeah. There was even a decorative surfboard in one corner of the living room behind the TV. The living room looked out to the back deck, which then looked out to the beach. The view was amazing. The deck wasn't elevated very high off the ground. It was just two steps down and onto the sand. Hey, what you got, what you give We all claimed our bedrooms. I managed to get one of the rooms with a view of the beach. First thing we did after settling in was, of course, walking outside and laying on the beach. We all went in the water at one point and then played football. We were definitely on the beach for a few hours. We seemed to be the only ones on the beach apart from this older looking couple way down the beach. Afterwards, we went out to eat and then started bar hopping in the town area. When we Ubered back, it was dark out. No one there. We went outside on the beach to fuck around and play late night football. It's the while old we people were again. Drunk. As I was running to grab the ball after missing a catch, I noticed something in the water. The moon reflecting on the ocean was the only reason I could see it. I said, what the fuck is that, out loud, and then realized it was a person standing in the water, about waist deep. My friends looked over and said they saw it too. Okay. It was only a little weird because of the time. It was like past midnight, but hey, if a local wants to go for a midnight swim, that's their business. We then went to sit on the deck and drink beers for a while until we got tired, 
and one by one, everyone started going inside to go to sleep. My friend John and I were the last ones out there. I had been every once in a while glancing in the direction I saw that person before in the water just out of curiosity, and so eventually when I shot a glance in that direction, I spotted someone standing on the beach. They appeared to be just standing there facing us. It was kind of creepy. Maybe a neighbor. I didn't want to be rude. But I wondered if it was the same person. We tried to ignore it, but John was facing that person, and after a while, he said they were still just standing there facing us. I stood up and looked over and saw he was right. I yelled out, is everything okay? John asked, why do you do that? I honestly didn't know what I was expecting. They didn't even reply anything, though. Yeah, what are they going to say back? Like, oh, don't mind me, bro. Yeah, I'm just looking at you. Not doing anything. I'm just staring at you, dude. We were officially creeped out, so we went inside. The other two, Travis and Liam, were already in their rooms, probably knocked out from drinking. So John and I decided to just call it a night, too, so that we could have a full day tomorrow. If I had to guess, it was 12.30 to 1 a.m., which was honestly on the earlier side, but we were all burnt out from the long day. I went to my room after brushing my teeth. I looked out the window wanting to take a look to the ocean before the crawling say. into bed. The this is where the creepiness factor escalated substantially, because there was now someone standing in front of the back deck, nice. facing the house. Oh, that. I felt like they were facing my window. Hell no. Nah. The figure of the person appeared to be male, considering the slightly larger frame. It was undoubtedly the same person from before. I called John's name. He didn't reply. So I ran to his room and banged on his door, telling him to come out. Hell no. Nah. He came out pretty quickly, and I led him to my window to look outside. But now the person was gone. I swore to him that the person from earlier was just standing as still as before, right in front of our deck. He believed. Yo, I would say he's tripping and he's hallucinating, but like his friends seen it as well. Believed me. We weren't about to go outside and look around though. I took one more look to make sure that they were still gone, and then I shut the blind to the bedroom window. But as I lay awake in bed, rolling from side to side, trying to sleep, I just couldn't shake the feeling that someone was still outside. Shake, shake, shake. Who shake. was that person? Why were they creeping around? Oh my god, I thought I was someone playing the knocking sound, bro. Fucking hell, dude. Jesus! Decide, trying to sleep. I just couldn't shake the feeling that someone was still outside. I'm too tired for this video Who chat. Who was that person? Why were too they tired. creeping around? My thoughts were interrupted by the sickening sound of a fist knocking on the bedroom window. Hell no, I thought that. I felt like my insides just shriveled up and my heart completely dropped out of my body. That's horrible. I laid silent and frozen. Moments later, another light set of knocks on the glass. I didn't Stop. dare lift the blind though. I couldn't gather the courage to. What if it's grandma? I almost yelled, who is it? But I stopped myself. Grandma. Instead, I ran out to the living room, screaming for everyone to wake up. Everyone, one by one, came out of their rooms. No one was at the window when we checked. All four of us went out to the deck and turned on the lights to the deck. We looked out onto the beach and didn't see anyone. We also checked the front and sides of the house. No one. John and I had to explain to the other two what they missed when they fell asleep. We kept the backyard lights on that night. The next day, John and I went to the two nearest neighbors and asked them if they had also experienced someone knocking on their windows or doors. One of the neighbors told us a genuinely freaky encounter he had a week earlier. Someone knocked on their door in the middle of the night, and when he asked who it was, they wouldn't answer and just kept knocking, so he Weird. didn't answer the door. I'm not sure if it was connected, but if it was, that just makes this even scarier. We spent the rest of the day on the beach, exploring nearby towns, and hitting bars. Nothing happened that night. We left the next day. I still wonder what I would have seen if I had lifted the blind. Yeah, like, imagine, like, you actually live... Bro, it would just be some crazy guy. Doing some crazy, creepy smile. I was nine years old when this happened. For whatever reason, I was home alone one night. So I was playing video games upstairs in my room. I wasn't allowed to answer the door to anyone when I was home alone. Whenever I was left alone, it wasn't for long. My mom would just be out grocery shopping or something like that. I was playing Metroid Prime on my GameCube. I used to be obsessed with that game. 
I heard the house phone downstairs start to ring. My mom always told me to pick up the phone if it rang, in case it was her calling. So I hurried downstairs, and by maybe the fourth ring, I picked up. The caller ID was from my mom's cell phone. She said, sweetie, can you come outside and help with the groceries? I replied, mom? She said back, yes. I felt like something sounded off with her voice. You obviously know your own mom's voice, and so even at such right. a young age, when I was questioning why it didn't sound like her, I said, why do you sound like that? Okay, that's weird. She replied, like what, sweetie? And I hung up. My mom would never use the word sweetie like that, especially twice in a matter of seconds. The phone rang again, and my mom's number came up on the caller ID again. I ignored it. For some reason, my heart was racing. I was nervous. I sat in the kitchen, waiting to see if the phone would ring a third time, and it did. It took a couple minutes before the third ringing, but when I checked the caller ID, this time it was a different number. I picked up, and a man's voice on the other end said, Hey James, I know this is going to sound weird, but it's your dad. I'm outside. Yo, how dumb do you think... How old is he, chat? Did he say? How dumb do you think this kid is, bro? You pretend to be the mom, and now you're pretending to be the dad. Bro, you're just confusing me. <laughs> He's getting confused at this point. You know what was? Oh, he's nine. All I could mutter out was a weak, what? The man said, I'm outside. He's I have nine. a lot to explain. I hung up right then and there. My dad died when I was three. I have no memories of him. Oh, shit. My suspicion was in fact true that the first voice I heard was not my mom's. Yo. The phone rang again, and then again after that. Let me guess, Grandma. I ignored it each time. Hi, it's I Grandma. I couldn't even call my mom because someone clearly had her phone. And things Bro, took a turn weird, for the though. worse when there were knocks at the front door. This went from a someone has my mom's phone to Wait, chat, hold up, hold up, hold up. Did he say he's home alone? And he's nine? You gotta bear with me this video chat because bro, we've been streaming for 20 hours and 30 minutes. He's home alone and he's nine. What did he do it? That's not allowed. Is that allowed? Bro, I'm missing... I, I can't do my best detective work right now, bro. I've been awake for 20 hours. I've been streaming for 20 hours, bro. I can't... You know what I mean? I can't do my best detective work, dude, right now. Bro, why are you leaving your, your nine-year-old kid home alone, bro? Situation to a someone is outside the house situation. My mom would not be knocking on the door. She'd have a key, obviously. Right. I peered around the wall of the kitchen to look at the front door. I heard a man's muffled voice on the other side saying my name. He was saying, it's your dad. He rang the doorbell, and then I heard oh, him start attempting to open the door. Bro, the sound effects are creeping me the fuck out. I did something that no nine-year-old should ever have to do. Well, I got I was grabbing the phone and calling 911. Oh. The 911 operator asked me what I imagined to be some pretty standard questions. Most importantly, telling me to wait in a bathroom or other room with a lockable door until the police get there. The bathroom is on the first floor of the house. I hid in there with the lights off. Whoever was outside came to the window and tried pulling it open. I heard their entire struggle. Then they must have moved to the next window. I think they tried every window and door in the house. What the fuck? If anything were to have been unlocked, this story would have had a very different outcome. They must have yeah, like, bro, what's the intent here, bro? To, like, kidnap the kid or do... Oh, no, 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 no. Thank God everything was locked. Given up at some point before the police arrived. And I say they, because clearly there were two people involved in this. A man and a woman. They both could have been out there for all I know. The operator told me that the police are at the front door now, and it's safe to go meet them there. Only when I opened the door to the police was when I hung up the phone. They did a quick investigation inside right, and outside of the house and asked me where my mom was supposed to be and if my mom knew anyone who might want to hurt us. I'm sure I said I thought she was grocery shopping or something and not that I know of. My mom returned home with my- Wait, yo, won't the cops question why is a nine-year-old kid home by himself? Why are the cops are like, yo, what is your mom doing? Why are you there? Little sister in a panic when she saw the police cars out front. My mom's phone was stolen which was already clear. I'm sure that our address, home phone number, and other personal information was stored somewhere on the phone, easily accessible, though how they knew my name, I'm not exactly sure. It was coming Something on then. my mom's okay. phone must have given it away. It was an old Nokia flip phone. 
Who stole it was a mystery, but my mom's phone background was a picture of her with my little sister and I. This could have been an indication to some disgusting, creepy couple out there that the owner of this phone was a single mom with two young kids. Mad. Yo, had a jokes on you, I ain't got no tonsils, bro. And they tried to use that as a way of tricking me into leaving the house, which is absolutely disgusting and horrific. The phone must have been destroyed after the failed attempts at trying to lure me outside. Things were a little different after this. My mom wouldn't leave me alone anymore at night. Not until I was a few years older, at least. Mad. Mad. Yo, that would be so scary, especially at nine years old, dude. That would be terrifying, bro.